אזרחי ישראל, אנחנו במלחמה. לא במבצע, לא בסבבים, במלחמה. Is Israel delivering a final warning that shocks the world? Recent events in Israel have ignited global interest and concern, hinting that the end of our world may be nearer than we think. What impact will this revelation have, and what does it mean for our future? Let's find out the answers to these urgent questions in this video. Israel, a country in the Middle East near the Mediterranean Sea, is a place deeply cherished by Christians, Muslims, and Jews. Its capital, Jerusalem, holds numerous sacred sites that play a crucial role in the religious beliefs of these three faiths. For Judaism and Christianity, Israel is often called the Holy Land, and Jerusalem is considered the Holy City. In their religious traditions, Israel is where the essence of their faith resides and where they feel the presence of their messengers and prophets. For Christians, Israel is especially significant because it is the place where many pivotal events in the life of Jesus Christ occurred. These events are documented in the Bible, particularly in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Some of the most notable locations include the Temple Mount, the Old City, the Western Wall, and Mount Zion. In Islam, Israel holds value as well. It is the land where Jesus, known as Hazrat Isa, is recognized as one of Allah's messengers. Islamic teachings suggest that certain prophecies are yet to be fulfilled, and one of them involves the reconstruction of Solomon's temple on the Temple Mount. The Quest for a Third Temple The idea of rebuilding the original temple, known as Solomon's Temple, has recently gained attention. This temple was a place of worship dedicated to God and existed thousands of years ago. It was destroyed by the Babylonians and later replaced by Herod's Temple, which stood for over five centuries until the Romans destroyed it. The concept of a third temple has emerged as a response to the destruction of the second temple. However, this endeavor is complex due to opposition from countries with Islamic backgrounds and the intricate political situation in Jerusalem. Various nations recognize different parts of Jerusalem as the capital for Israel and Palestine, leading to ongoing regional tensions and conflicts. This complex situation adds another layer of significance to Jerusalem in the context of these three faiths. The presence of the Dome of the Rock, a significant Islamic monument, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem adds a layer of complexity to the ongoing discussions and debates regarding the site's historical significance. The central question revolves around whether the previous temple, known as Solomon's Temple, stood in the same location as the Dome of the Rock. Numerous research efforts and investigations have been conducted to uncover the truth. One notable discovery that has contributed to the discussions was made by British archaeologist Robert Hamilton. He found a mikvah, a Jewish ritual bath, beneath the floor of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This finding supports the belief in the historical location of the temple, reigniting the debate surrounding its reconstruction. In response to the recent mikvah discovery, the Sanhedrin, a highly respected Jewish tribunal, has taken steps to prepare to construct the third temple. The land, once farmland and forests, is being cultivated to meet the future needs of the temple. One crucial requirement for temple services is the availability of a flawless red heifer, a unique cow that meets specific criteria. Its ashes are essential for the purification process of Jews participating in temple rituals. The quest for the perfect red heifer Rabbi Jane Richmond, a prominent figure in Israel, is actively engaged in the mission to bring a perfect red heifer back to Israel. The purification process, as described in Numbers 19 of the Bible, demands meticulous adherence to biblical instructions. However, obtaining a suitable red heifer is a challenging endeavor, requiring immense effort and dedication. The scarcity of red heifers used for purification rituals between the first and second temples is well documented. Yet Rabbi Jane Richmond and fellow rabbis from the Temple Institute have embarked on an ambitious mission. They are collaborating with a cattle farmer to breed a red heifer using modern scientific methods. This involves implanting frozen embryos from North American Red Angus cattle into Israeli domestic cattle. Their aim is to achieve success in this challenging task. The red heifer must be born in Israel, flawless in appearance, and never used for work. Building the third temple involves more than just obtaining the red heifer. 
Training a special group of priests, known as the Kohanim, is vital to ensure the proper execution of temple services and rituals, preparing the Kohanim and the altar. Up. Under the guidance of the Sanhedrin and the temple movement, the Kohanim, priests, are diligently learning the proper rituals and equipment usage necessary for temple service. One critical aspect of the construction involves the creation of a new altar, which is crucial for the sacrifices that will take place at the original site on the Temple Mount. The Jewish community's desire to rebuild the temple is rooted in their restricted access to the previous temple site, which is currently controlled by Muslims. Overcoming this obstacle necessitates political action and international cooperation. Israel's Judicial Council recognized this need, suggesting potential international organizations and regional states' mediation. Collaborative efforts among faith leaders from various backgrounds are deemed essential to rebuild the temple. The Antichrist and temple construction biblical texts, including the books of Daniel and Revelation, contain hints about a figure referred to as the Antichrist. In Revelation 13.13, 13, there is a reference to this figure, and some interpretations suggest that the Antichrist could be a potential political leader involved in the reconstruction of the Third Temple. This implies that influential figures globally might lend their support to the construction efforts. Looking back in history, in the 8th century BC, King Hezekiah oversaw the creation of the Siloam Pool, also known as the Pool of Siloam. This pool played a vital role in securing Jerusalem's water supply through a tunnel meticulously carved by skilled engineers. The continuous flow of water from the Gihon Spring sustained the city even during challenging times. As these ventures to rebuild the temple unfolds, the importance of unity and mutual understanding becomes increasingly clear. Questions linger. Can the quest for the Red Heifer succeed? Will the Temple Mount undergo a transformation? Time will ultimately provide the answers. Amid diverse communities and beliefs, collective efforts persist towards the shared goal of rebuilding the Third Temple, symbolizing faith, heritage, and a deep connection to history. Pool of Siloam, the remarkable engineering feat of King Hezekiah. In the 8th century BC, King Hezekiah initiated an extraordinary endeavor, the construction of the Siloam Pool, also known as the Pool of Siloam. This remarkable engineering feat was designed to secure a consistent water source for Jerusalem during times of conflict. Carved through solid rock for approximately 2,000 feet, it channeled water from the Gihon Spring into the city twice daily. The pool, measuring about 53 feet in length, 18 feet in width, and 19 feet in depth, was a testament to the fusion of nature's rock formations and human craftsmanship. Tragically, the Second Temple and the Pool of Siloam faced destruction during the Babylonian attack on Jerusalem. However, the pool was later reconstructed during the time of Nehemiah and underwent further expansion under the rule of Herod the Great. The Pool of Siloam held deep cultural and religious significance, becoming a gathering place for those in need, particularly the poor and sick, who believed in its healing properties. The Pool of Siloam played a pivotal role during the Feast of Tabernacles, a celebration that reminded the Israelites of their liberation from Egypt. This festival marked their ancestors' journey from bondage to freedom and featured ceremonies at the pool that were instrumental in preserving Israel's cultural and religious heritage. Also known as Sukkot, this festival was a special occasion among Jews, commemorating their deliverance from Egypt and giving thanks for the harvest. During Sukkot, the Mishnah, a collection of Jewish teachings, guided the construction of temporary dwellings called sukkahs. People expressed gratitude to God for sustenance and fervently prayed for rain. A priest would fetch water from the pool of Siloam during the festival, and the jubilant crowd would accompany him while reciting Psalms 113 to 118. The priest would then pour the water on the altar's west side, symbolizing Isaiah 12, 3. In 2004, the Pool of Siloam was uncovered during sewer line excavations, revealing only a portion of its length. This rediscovery provides a glimpse into this ancient water source's rich history and significance. Armageddon, more than apocalypse. Now let's explore the concept of Armageddon, a term often linked to apocalyptic scenarios but having a distinct meaning within our context. As mentioned in Revelation 16.16, 16, Armageddon signifies a gathering place for armies in battle. 
It represents a worldwide rebellion against God's authority and isn't limited to a specific location. The term originates from Mount Megiddo in northern Israel, known for historical battles, but it can also symbolize natural disasters like earthquakes, floods, or hail. Natural events such as landslides, thunderstorms, diseases, wildfires, and lightning often showcase the might of a higher power. These occurrences can impact nations that disregard moral principles. Recent times have witnessed various regions worldwide facing these disasters, reminding us of the forces that shape our world and the importance of ethical values. The concept of the end of the world has fascinated humans for centuries. Across various cultures and periods, questions about the potential demise of our planet or the end of human civilization have been pondered. Recently, Israel has been hinting at final warnings about the end of the world, sparking curiosity about the accuracy of these claims. Israel holds a unique position as the seat of three major world religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Geographically located at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea, Israel is bordered by Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt, the capital, Jerusalem, though not widely recognized internationally, holds immense significance for all three religions in the Abrahamic faiths. In Christianity, Jerusalem is associated with the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the Old City is regarded as the site of Jesus' crucifixion and burial, making it one of the holiest places for Christians. Various Christian denominations have important religious sites and churches within the city, in Islam, Jerusalem is revered as the third holiest city after Mecca and Medina. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, located in the Old City, is considered the third holiest site in Islam. The Dome of the Rock, an iconic golden-topped shrine, is believed to mark where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavens. In Judaism, Jerusalem is considered the most sacred city and is central to Jewish identity and religious practice. The Temple Mount the holiest site in Judaism holds great religious significance. The Western Wall, a retaining wall of the Second Temple, is crucial for Jews, being the holiest place where they can openly pray. The Rise and Fall of the Temples in Jerusalem Jerusalem's significance in Judaism is deeply rooted in its association with the ancient Jewish temples. The First Temple, constructed by King Solomon, symbolized the Israelites' covenant with God and served as the central place of worship. Unfortunately, the first temple was destroyed in 586 BCE by the Babylonian Empire, leading to the Babylonian exile of the Israelites. After the destruction, the Jewish people aspired to rebuild the temple, resulting in the construction of the second temple. Initially a modest structure, it underwent significant expansions and renovations under the reign of King Herod the Great, becoming an opulent and awe-inspiring structure. However, the Second Temple met a tragic fate, destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. Herod's Temple, the rebuilt Second Temple, served as the central place of worship for the Jewish people and the focal point of religious life. Despite its grandeur, its destruction had far-reaching consequences for Judaism, leading to significant changes in religious practices and the development of Rabbinic Judaism. The Impact of Temple Destruction on Judaism the destruction of the Second Temple marked a pivotal moment in Jewish history. It led to Rabbinic Judaism's development, shaping how Jews practiced their faith. The loss of the physical center of worship prompted a shift towards a more decentralized form of Judaism with a focus on synagogues and rabbinic teachings. The tragic events surrounding the destruction of the Second Temple also influenced Jewish worship practices and rituals. The absence of a central sacrificial system led to adaptations in how Jews expressed their faith, emphasizing prayer, study, and community gatherings. The Western Wall, the remnant of the Second Temple, became a symbol of resilience and devotion for Jewish communities worldwide, the legacy of the Second Temple in Jewish tradition. The Second Temple may be physically absent, but its memory holds immense importance in Jewish religious traditions. The desire to rebuild this sacred structure remains a lasting hope for many Jewish individuals and groups. The idea of a third temple is deeply rooted in the belief that a future messianic era, as prophesied in biblical books like Ezekiel and Zechariah, will bring about the reconstruction of the temple and the reinstatement of worship practices. 
However, constructing the third temple is a topic of theological interpretation, sparking debates among different Jewish groups. Some Orthodox and traditionalist Jews anticipate a literal rebuilding, while others view it symbolically, representing spiritual redemption rather than a physical structure. The complexities surrounding the Temple Mount, a site of great religious significance housing the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, present challenges to any potential reconstruction. The Temple Mount, the site of the previous two temples, currently hosts the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, both considered holy in Islam. Any plans for rebuilding the temple must first address the sensitive issue of altering or removing these existing structures, likely facing intense opposition from the Muslim community. The Islamic Waykef, a religious trust managing Muslim holy sites, initially denied the existence of a pre-temple on the site. However, historical evidence, such as British archaeologist Robert Hamilton's discovery of a Jewish ritual cleansing site beneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque, challenges these claims. The discovery of a mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath, within the mosque's foundations indicates the historical Jewish connection to the site. Despite the evidence, political sensitivities and tensions in the region, especially with the presence of the Dome of the Rock, complicate any attempts at physical reconstruction. Kohanim Training and the Red Heifer The vision of rebuilding the Third Temple faces various challenges, including training the Kohanim, descendants of Aaron responsible for the temple's care and upkeep. A Sanhedrin, a governing body overseeing Jewish law, was formed to ensure the proper training of Kohanim, involving education in laws, customs, rituals, and priestly duties associated with the temple service. Additionally, challenges arise in procuring the essential element for temple sacrifices, the red heifer. According to Jewish law, the red heifer must be entirely red with no blemishes, symbolizing ritual purity. This rare cow is slaughtered and burned outside the camp, and its ashes are mixed with water for purification rituals. Finding a red heifer meeting these specific criteria is a significant obstacle. The Sanhedrin has actively sought solutions to these challenges. Efforts include collaboration with the Temple Institute to cultivate farmlands and recreate Israel's natural environment during biblical times. However, challenges persist, such as the rarity of red heifers and the complexities surrounding the political landscape of the Temple Mount. And now, the journey to rebuild the Third Temple encounters a crucial milestone with the birth of an unblemished red heifer. Rabbi Chaim Richmond, alongside Reverend Clyde Lott, a rancher and Pentecostal minister, embarked on a unique endeavor to produce a red heifer. Understanding the intricacies of animal husbandry and the specific rules for breeding, they implanted frozen embryos of North America's Red Angus into Israel's domestic cattle. After numerous failed attempts, the announcement of the birth of a red heifer calf in Israel marked a historic moment, being the first in the country in 2,000 years. This achievement brought relief and excitement, especially for those anticipating the results. The red heifer, kept in an undisclosed location, is expected to play a significant role in future religious ceremonies. Plans are underway, led by Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo, to hold a ceremony to slaughter the imported red heifers during Passover in 2024. However, this endeavor is not without its challenges, particularly regarding the delicate issue of the Temple Mount's control, which remains under Muslim authority. The delicate dance of politics and prophecy. The prospect of rebuilding the Third Temple introduces a delicate dance between politics and prophecy. Rabbi Yit Shak Mamo's plan to perform the Red Heifer Ceremony on the Mount of Olives faces a hurdle as the Temple Mount remains under Muslim control. This delicate issue raises tension levels, with the Muslim community viewing the idea of rebuilding the Temple as a threat to their sovereignty. The potential political fallout could lead to international complications, making it necessary for Israel to approach the matter with caution and political finesse. Despite the challenges, Israel remains determined to pursue rebuilding the temple. The driving force behind this determination is anchored in their belief in prophecies. The book of Daniel, specifically in chapter 9, outlines a timeline for rebuilding the temple, detailing a period of 70 weeks or 490 years. This prophecy speaks of the coming of the Messiah, the destruction of the city and the temple, and the eventual rebuilding of the temple. Interpretations of these prophecies guide the actions of those who hold firm to the belief that they are fulfilling God's plan. 
Battle of Armageddon. The concept of Armageddon looms large in discussions surrounding the end times. Armageddon is prophesied as the ultimate battle between the forces of good, led by Jesus Christ, and the forces of evil, led by the Antichrist. Armageddon is mentioned in the Book of Revelation, symbolizing a climactic showdown between heavenly and earthly forces. While its precise location has been debated, the term itself is derived from the Hebrew phrase Har Megiddo, signifying the Hill of Megiddo, an ancient fortified city in northern Israel. Biblical passages such as Matthew 24 and Revelation provide signs of the impending Armageddon, including wars, famines, earthquakes, and the rise of false prophets. These prophecies warn of humanity's challenges in the end times, urging individuals to remain grounded in faith and discerning amidst potential deception. Far from signifying the end of the world, Armageddon represents the climax of contemporary civilization's moral decay and the ultimate battle between earthly nations and heavenly forces. What do you think of the final warning by Israel? Comment below and subscribe for more.